Trevor Lawrence got the bag and it's good. It's a good situation to be in if you are a quarterback that played for the Cowboys by the name of Dak Prescott. And here's my thoughts with everything. Trevor Lawrence has agreed with this particular contract per sources. He is now a five-year extension, $275 million, $55 million a year, twenty well, $200 million guaranteed, and $142 million fully. So that's pretty much the extension plus all what he's going to get is roughly a quarter of a billion dollars give or take right a little less than that now it's a clever idea because it's a five-year deal opposed to being a four-year deal right but i i would tell you guys right now the apy a lot of people gonna look at that but always look at the guarantees right and that's 200 million i would tell you guys right now that Dak Prescott could get up to 60 million per year. He could be. He could get that. Now, I know a lot of people want to go back and forward and say, well, Dak literally, he's not worth 60 million. He's not worth 55. He's not worth 50. He's not worth 45. <laughs> I heard the argument where it was 40 and 35. But the market is the market. I've been saying these things for a long time. The only way that you can get quarterbacks at a lower rate, especially when you have quarterbacks that's pretty much on a team that's winning, right? And you consistently get into the playoffs because you don't pay quarterbacks based off of playoff wins, right? If that's the case, then Jimmy Garoppolo will have more money than Aaron Rodgers, right? You pay them on the extent that these guys can get you to the playoffs and to prove that I, I, we have this right here let me see if i can pull this up shout out to uh steven van pelt right and brandon laurie for chopping this up he says you're paying for the maybe and let's listen to what he have to say remember what i recently said here on the show about dak it's that you, you pay for regular season. Dak's going to get his money, by the way, from Dallas. And it's the same theory, which is at work here for the same reason. Because Lawrence gives the Jaguars a chance. That is what you pay for in the NFL at this position. A quarterback who gives you a shot to win enough regular season games that maybe, maybe you can make a playoff run. And the Jags have not with him yet. In fact, the lone playoff win they've got came against the Chargers, who you recall blew an enormous lead in that game. But right. the Chargers gave Justin Herbert huge money for the same reason the Jags just paid Lawrence. You got to have a guy. You're paying for the maybe. And Lawrence is simply the most recent. In a way, it's like selling your house when the housing market is absolutely on fire. Doesn't have to be the nicest house, but you got to have a house. And he was the one that was for sale, so good for him. $200 billion. Yeah, so... I've been using the house analogy for a long time. I've been using that house analogy for a long time. And, and I get it. I understand that a lot of people will look back at this and say, hey, look, we, we ain't trying to talk about houses, law. We are not going to pay this dude right here, Dak Prescott, $60 million. No, 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 no. Or 55, nor 50, nor 45. The longer you wait, the more you pay. And the more those leaves falling off, the higher you're going to pay, Jerry. Now, Dak Prescott going into a year coming off of a all-pro year, right? And those numbers were accumulated on the back end of the schedule once he figured out some things that Mike McCarthy liked to do. I'm with the um, mindset that he's going to perform even better this season, heading into the 2024 season. And when we look at numbers and we look at everything, uh, even those who can't even talk right got this message for a lot of folks to hear and hear me out because my guy Action Powell sent me this right here. Let's listen to it. On the left, no name quarterbacks on the right. Those two quarterbacks statistically are the same guy, meaning mm -hmm. the guy on the right's not better than Dak. Dak's not better than the guy on the right. I want you to see who Dak compares to in real time with real stats in the NFL. Mm. Three, two, two, one, reveal. 
What's up? <laughs> What's up? What's up? Oh Dak Prescott. Yeah. Dak yeah. Prescott is as good as Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> the real difference is <laughs> no way, no way, right? No way. Now, I'm not saying that Dak Prescott is better than Pat Mahomes. Right? I'm not saying that Pat Mahomes is the greatest thing since sliced bread. But you can literally say, shoot. He's probably be the greatest thing since sliced bread. I think that Pat Mahomes fell into the right situation. There's no way we can compare apples to apples with this. It's not like Pat Mahomes starting off his career had Jason Garrett and then had another head coach who took a year off to come back here, right, to coach. And I'm talking about Mike McCarthy. Now, those can sound like bevies of excuses, et cetera, but the expectation still higher with the Cowboys versus the Chiefs anyway, you know. The Cowboys are expected to win the Super Bowl this year. The Chiefs, they going probably to back to the Super Bowl. But the expectation's different. Now, granted, Pat Mahomes is a beautiful thrower of the ball. I mean, his skill set is unbelievable. And when you get to the postseason, right, and you look at a team that the Kansas City Chiefs exhibits and exudes. They all rally and they all stand tall to the occasion, right? I don't recall their defense allowing everybody, mama, uncle, cousin, Tupac, and Biggie running all over them. On top of that, even with their offensive side of the coin, I don't recall their offense only on the ground averaging about two yards per tote. No, 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 no. So, Andy Reid, I think that he should get some credit. Travis Kelsey should get some credit. Chris Jones should get some credit. And Spagnola over there on the defensive side should get some credit. But ultimately, Pat Mahomes, hey, he's a force multiplier. And Dak Prescott, <laughs> he's not when you look at everything as it relates to postseason. I think that in order for us to win – in the postseason, you got to have this, and most can argue that this is across the board for any quarterback. You got to have run game, and you got to have the ability to stop the run. And when you look up Dak Prescott's numbers, when he do have the run game, and they do have the ability to stop the run, oh, oh, the Cowboys win in those situations. But neither here nor there. Let's finish out with this dude. About 10 games, playoff games. Mm -hmm. That in January, as you're alluding to, when you need your quarterback to make a big play, Dak Prescott doesn't, and Patrick Mahomes does. Because over 50 games, Dak Prescott's Patrick Mahomes. Right. The problem is the next 10 games, meaning playoff games. Dak Prescott has not been the reason the Dallas Cowboys got over the hump, and yet Patrick Mahomes is the reason that Kansas City is going for their fourth Super Bowl in the last, what, six years. No doubt, no doubt. And the only thing that I can say as a rebuttal to that, don't forget about Chris Jones. Don't forget about the way that their team make plays on defensive side of the coin, right? Let's keep this in mind. In the Super Bowl, in the biggest and the brightest of the stage that you can ever think of, the 49ers were nine yards away from winning the Super Bowl. The Kansas City Chiefs stood tall. Now, granted, you still have to drive the ball back down the field to score. And that's what they did. And I recall another Super Bowl that Jalen Hurts wanted to play basketball with the football. And it was another scoop and score for that particular defense so that they can score and get momentum back going, right? It's not just about only the quarterback. It's about your other pieces standing tall. And I know they could be to a notion of a lot of people only ancillary but if you look back at the very very first Super Bowl that the Kansas City Chiefs won with Pat Mahomes we can also see that they had an unbelievable run game but people will argue and say well law come on man it's not making sense Pat Mahomes is one of the greatest of all times he is but I'm old enough to remember that when things were not right with that front five was it was that score against Tampa Bay 30 something to nine? Right? Let me know. And they ultimately didn't win that Super Bowl. But granted, the, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, they had their way.
And Pat Mahomes in that game looked very pedestrian. So you still need weapons. You still need help, even if you are a Pat Mahomes. So if Pat Mahomes need help and he need good and proper coaching, what the world do you guys think that Dak Prescott need, right? <laughs> That's all I'm saying. So here's the thing. When Dak Prescott got his first contract, people were talking about how many playoff wins, how many playoff wins, how many playoff wins. They should hold him and not pay him according to playoff wins. Now, I've seen Kyler Murray get a big money. He don't have playoff wins. And I've seen Justin Herbert get big money, and he don't have playoff wins. As of today, Trevor Lawrence got big money, and he got one playoff win, right? So, and all of those boys that I just mentioned, let me know where they were drafted at, too, by the way. But we're not talking about a fourth-round quarterback by the name of Dak Prescott. <laughs> no, no. I'm just trying to put it out there so that you guys can understand. So, neither here nor there. Cowboy Nation, post me your thoughts, post me your concerns all together. All I can say is salute to Trevor Lawrence for getting his bag. But the price of Dak Prescott contract is about to go up, regardless of whether or not you, you want to say, hey, you know. He ain't worth this. He ain't worth that. But let me ask you guys a real true, true question. Let me ask you guys this. And be 1,000 with me. Let's say if the Cowboys decide to only pay Dak Prescott $30 million. Let me just use a low number like that, right? And he decided to agree, right? Say, hey, I'll take $30 million. Will the Cowboys change their ways because now they got the money? If the Cowboys are given the money, what would they do with it? Because historical data shows that they don't dance around in free agency week one and they don't will and deal. And it would take pulling teeth for them to do even trade acquisitions. So let me know, even if the Cowboys got the money, got the money in the hand right now, what would they do with it? That's been my time. I really thank you all for yours. And remember, you're listening to nothing but the best. Go Cowboys. Let's get it. Peace.